Hello everyone, I'm Julian and we're finally here. We've done it. We're finally here. We're back with this tutorial sort of. It's more like a breakdown. It's a breakdown. It's a breakdown of my Iron Man video, you know, the, that that video, which is like like the biggest video of my life apparently. <laughs> and pretty cool. It has now a million views, which is Crazy guys, so I finally decided to make a breakdown for it. So let's do it for this breakdown We're gonna be covering up basically shot by shot. I think I'm just gonna split it in different parts So we're gonna see how it goes. So let's jump into it So we're here in After Effects as you can see here We're gonna be starting with the first shot which is this one the suitcase coming in and me just open it up and pretty cool first of all I'm gonna talk about the composition so here as you can see I just imported my raw footage at the time I had a really crappy camera a really small digital camera <laughs> like this and that that camera could only record at 720 and actually this is not me this guy is not me is a friend actually because I really needed to get as close as I could to this camera angle and I couldn't teach my friend how to do that so and as you can see I, I let like a small camera movement because I didn't have a small enough tripod for this so I, I just did it with my hands kneel down and record it pretty simple after that I just started compositing this stuff which I already had as you may have the suitcase features in chroma which I just apply a chroma key after that, I realized that the reds are very vivid here, so I, I decided to desaturate them a bit so you could blend a little bit more. And after that, I also realized that the f this footage is like the Iron Man footage, it's really sharp. You, you can see here in the middle that it's, he has a lot of pixels, or <laughs> I mean, even more pixels than my crappy camera at the time. So I just apply a noise to it. And you can see it Whoop, up. to make it blend with the grain with the crappy grain of my camera <laughs> so i also need some contact shadows because it's the, it looks like it's it is floating so i just took a, a i don't know I, I think this is a shape or something no this is a mask so this is just a layer a black layer like this and we, just, I just position it something like this, something like this, let's say, and I just did a mess like that, and then just made it like a fast blur or something, and put it below the suitcase, and now we have some kind of shadows below, and now we have shadows, cool, something like that. And obviously you have to animate them because this case is moving so yeah you gotta try to match the movement after that I just needed to hide some stuff which was the reason why I always had these black bars because I just wanted to make it a little more a, a little bit more cinematic and have some a space where I could hide some stuff some stuff like this this cutout I just hide it with the black bars and that's it no more <laughs> easy easy peasy <laughs> and lastly I just you know the cinematic shot usually has like a lot of depth like you can see some parts that are blurry at the back and your subject is like very sharp and everything well when you have a, a small sensor camera like the one I have a compact camera you don't get that depth in your footage so what I did I just tried to come up with a very simple solution the best i could do at the time and we and it was just to create uh, an, an adjustment layer and like, basically mask the farthest parts from the video i just did that just to make it look a little bit more cinematic that's it for the compositing now we're gonna dive in into the rotoscoping of that piece as you can see here this is the raw footage it has a lot of movement and as we all know, rotoscoping is a very painfully slow process. So usually when you have to rotoscope stuff, you just gotta try to find the most efficient way to do it. 
and for that uh, every little thing that you can do to minimize the time that it will take you to do rotoscoping will work also if you're like me and you're planning to take this stuff and composite it into another footage you better have this footage stabilized because then it's going to be moving all around and matching the movement of this camera with this one and doing all this stuff it's going to be complicated and also making the rotoscoping of something that is moving a lot is also very complicated so what i did was to stabilize that footage as you can see here which allows you to basically have the suitcase almost like static on the floor like the camera is not moving because we're comp compensating the camera the camera movement with the with our digital movement and then on top of that one i decided to make the rotoscoping which is this one let me show you so it's a lot of max uh, at the time i didn't know much about rotoscoping now i know that this is not the way that you would do it <laughs> Uh, for rotoscoping you usually have to break apart the thing that you're gonna be rotoscoping so you have to break it apart in little parts and in very simple shapes basically and as you can see I didn't do that I just like made a complete shape for everything I animated it <laughs> and what's the problem the problem is that eventually you're gonna get to this point as you can see here i don't have detail here i, I just have like a couple like four points over there and after this moment the suitcase complicates a lot so eventually you're gonna stumble with this with the fact that the uh, that you're gonna be needing more points and your original mass doesn't have the points so what i did to fix that problem was I just created a new mask which is the orange one and when the time came I just interchanged it with the yellow one so boop, that's it boop, ready and doing so allowed me to basically animate this new mask and keep the shape going as you can see it's, it's very tricky and it gets very complicated so this is not the way that you would do it. Uh, if I had to do this now, I would just like do something like, let me see here, like try to rotoscope this part, and then this part, and then like a, a whole base, and then base two, and you know, you, you gotta break it down for you to be easy to manage. And as you can see, the same thing happened to me again. That's why I have this blue shape over here. Uh, eventually the time came when the mesh was getting like very complicated and whoop, I just had to create a new one because the amount of points that I need to be able to represent this shape in just one mass is it's a lot and basically the orange one didn't have enough points for me to to keep to keep doing it luckily for me uh, it, this is this is something that was that moves very fast as you can see here it's like very fast so you cannot see the details because the problem when you do this type of changes of mass is that when you do the change more usually than not you're gonna end up with an, a slightly different shape and once you rotoscope everything you're gonna be able to see the little variation on the edge and yeah what else we have over here and then lastly we have those little shapes that i needed to cut out some some parts of the rotoscope as you can see here the handle this one jumps down into the handle just to cut out that part and as you can see all the little mass are <laughs> start like coming in just to just to help me out with some parts and at the end you have this in rotoscope uh, lastly I'm gonna I'm just gonna teach you how to stabilize this thing so I have this footage the original one I'm just gonna try to do it in an easy way so when it arrive when it arrives you just click the footage and you go to your panels here and I have here yeah down below here I have track motion I'm just gonna track the position and the rotation 
and I'm just gonna select track type stabilize pretty simple after that I just gonna I, I just need to search for some contrasty points for me to track which in this case I will I will choose this ones and probably probably this one yeah look as you can see I'm choosing this thing which is on the foreground and this dark thing that we have here is on the background so if the background move because usually we have parallax so you know the camera moves and whatever this is behind it, it moves slower and whatever this is in the, on the foreground is gonna move quicker so if you have a lot of parallax doing this will not work because it will just move and, and then you're gonna lose the track but in this case if we analyze this footage I feel that it doesn't have parallax. I feel that this was animated digitally. Like this is an static shot, which then in post-production they animated. That's what I believe. And that's why I'm, I'm willing to shoot this point. After you shoot those two points, we're just gonna track it forward. And I mean, I'm not gonna do the beginning because it will probably get messed up or everything. So I mean, it's it's just about it's all about troubleshooting. <laughs> so I'm just gonna leave it over here and I'm just gonna apply it. You're gonna ask me X and Y, yes, because we wanna move it. We wanna stabilize it on the X X axis and on the Y axis. Okay. And now if we take a look at it, voila. It is stabilized and now it doesn't move so now that you have it like this it would be very easy for you to tr compass it into your f footage so yeah and now that the suitcase doesn't have camera movement I could just simply grab my footage here make a track for it which is this one this null I'm just gonna rename it track and I'm just gonna, I just parent the suitcase to that null. And now I have the movement of my camera. Without it, it would look something like this. Like with it, with it, it looks struck, it looks like in the place. If I took it away, it's, it's kind of subtle, but you can see that the my footage is moving and the suitcase is like on the air it is floating so that's why you need to track the footage in order for you to to track the suitcase into your scene so that's it guys uh thank you Th thank you for joining me on this one this is gonna be part one uh let me know what you think about it uh let me know if you want me to do more shots in one video or maybe like keep doing it like this like shot by shot video by video i want to know what you think about it uh, i want to start making more videos i i'm not really sure about what i want to make the videos but i want to get deeper into it i, I want i want to find something that i could do i read all the comments everything all the time even the horrible ones especially the horrible ones And that's it for today, guys. Uh, thank you for joining me. See ya. Bye.